Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Ami from Tokyo. Today, I've got super cool insights to share with you about Japanese customer view. You're gonna love this, so let's jump right in. All right, imagine you are in Japan and you are in the mood for some amazing food. Now, here's the secret. So, there is the low favorite website called Tabenoku. It's like their go to app for finding the best restaurant. But guess what? Most of the rating you'll see based are between 3.0 and 3.9. Crazy, right? You won't find many ones or flags around. The whole different vibe for Computer GLP in the US, my friend. This is not specific to the website. It happens of many customer reviews. In Japan, we've got this mindset like, hey, if it's flat, it should be super excellent good. And then the normal is three. We don't usually go to extreme. Now let's talk about the common challenge when it comes to analyzing reviews in the Japanese market. You see, the products and service often get lower rating compared to other countries. So why does the Japanese market tend to be more critical? Let's find out. Here's another example. On Amazon, there's a popular product like Amazon Echo Dot. In the US, Italy, the UK, Australia, Canada, it's getting consistent five star ratings. But hold on, in Japan and France, it's more like four stars or even lower. In American reviews, people say things like, the music in radio could be better, but overall, it's improved with each version. They are all about the balanced perspective, which leads to higher rating of five. But in Japan, they'll mention a good stuff, like the improved sound quality and then better voice recognition. However, if it doesn't support USB power anymore, they might express some disappointment, bringing the rating down to four. So what's the deal with these ratings? Well, it all comes down to the cultural factors. Japanese consumers tend to see three as a baseline, while other countries start at five. In Japan, if a product service is normal, it gets a three. In other places, it does what it's supposed to do, already get five. In Japan, when they say normal, it means they're satisfied without major complaint. They believe a four should only be given if it's significantly better than average. And the rating of five out of five is wow excellent, as I said before. Like, you added more value to the product or service. This is impossible to find. Now, here's the thing. These cultural differences can have an impact on your business when you're responding to Japan. Understanding your responding to customer feedback is challenging, but it can make or break or your brand reputation. Don't worry, I've got some good solutions. Here are some practical strategies to tackle low rating in Japanese companies. Solution. First, test the water. Use Japan as a test market. Get the negative feedback and intervention suggestion. Engage with your customer, show them you're open to the new opinions, and they use their insight to level up your game. Secondly, upgrade your review system. Go beyond the standard five point scale. Break it down into specific categories like quality, price, and service. This helps Japanese customers to give more detailed and objective evaluation. And hey, you can even add the yes or no options for each category to get even more precise feedback. Explaining your rating is also good. When you're using a five-point scale, give explanations for each rating. Instead of very satisfied, make it satisfied. This clears up any confusions and help customers rate accurately. Finally, remember when you see low rating in Japan with customer reviews, it's crucial to understand the culture differences. Embrace those differences, put on your culture goggles, and interpret feedback within a context. And that's a wrap of understanding Japanese customer reviews, my friend. As you expand your business into Japan, keep these insights in mind to conquer the review game. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make it sure to subscribe for more awesome content. I'm Ami from Tokyo, your Japanese buddy and business consultant, signing off. Catch you later in the next video. Bye!